Hey, tell me how we go. It's Casper in the trenches. We've Casper got two of the uh, the finest up and coming apprentices in the footsteps of the Anzacs. Of course, if you can give yourselves an introduction, who are you? Good day, mate. Um, Private McKenna. How you going? I'm Private Featherston. Yeah. What platoon are you from, Let's? We're uh, from a private. <laughs> 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 Hey team, how are we going? It is Kaz from Boom in the trenches with Kaz, and I am here today as part two of the Kapuka versus the School of Infantry training to give you more of a rundown. The litmus test: What do we need to know? The secret sauce, please, Captain. School of Infantry. At the moment, as we make this, as you watch this, there is a platoon that has already marched out of Kapuka on Friday. It's currently Sunday, and they're about to get in a vehicle tomorrow morning, straight up, first up, maybe have breakfast, or maybe they'll hit it on the road, and they're on the way to the School of Infantry for their first day, the commencement of their 343 training, while simultaneously at the School of Infantry tomorrow, there is a platoon that is about to launch. There is 50 plus people in holding platoon, Gallipoli platoon, getting ready to go and adopt the push-up position so that they can earn their way into the session that is about to commence. But it only takes 48 people. And of those 48 people, there's still going to be a large amount not make it. There is already a team that is qualified for and about to commence the next 13 weeks towards the light at the end of the tunnel, completing their training and becoming a fully trained Australian infantry soldier in the footsteps of the Anzacs. And to those guys, I say... Bam, enjoy your skippy badge because you've had to earn every single bit. But it's not about them today. It's about you. So let's get into it. Again, this will be delivered in points. Enjoy. If I call you Betty, will you call me Al? Dun, 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 dun. This brings us to point one. And point one will be known as Human nature, the human element, so to speak. When you go to Kapuka, you are going to be tolerated. No matter what your flaws are, there'll be a diversity of success while you're at Kapuka. Some of the things you do are actually classes participation only, not at job level. Because it's not dangerous. A lot of it is theoretical. A lot of it is to do with training objectives that must be met to give you the ability to speak the language that is of soldier, so to speak. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors too, just like everyone is religious on Sunday, funny enough, at Kapuka. The mistakes you make at Kapuka, you will be forgiven for. Your reputation is unlikely to follow you beyond Kapuka itself. And ultimately, you will never see most of the people you go through Kapuka with ever again unless they go to your core, or you might go past them um, if they're posted to the same location, but they're not going to be your buddy you hang out with. All right? They are a necessary evil to get through Kapuka. On the other hand, the School of Infantry. When you get to the School of Infantry, your reputation starts to build on itself. Although you turn up and there is 100 points again, there is also the equity, the diversity, uh, the 100% uh, opportunity for all to shine, that doesn't guarantee an opportunity of outcome. Are you happy to go to Townsville? I'm happy, well, yeah. I, yes, I'm happy to go to Townsville. You know there's a shortage of girls there? I know. You have to earn every single thing that you get at the School of Infantry, and your reputation starts building from the moment you get off, again, the said bus. Remember as well, that when you go to Gallipoli Platoon, Holding Platoon, that is a temporary junction. From there, you'll go to a session where you'll go into a platoon that is named after a battle honour, whether it be Long Tan Platoon, Capiong Platoon, Bin Bar, etc. Once you go in there, you'll be put again into a team of around 12 people. Why 12 when infantry sections are only eight men in a battalion? Could it be because they expect that the back squatting the failure due to injury, trainability, or attitude 
we'll whittle that down from 12 to somewhere like 9, you know, or 10 maybe. And that way they don't have to dissolve a section, so to speak. So anticipate failure at the School of Infantry. You will see it. And if you didn't, I'd be questioning why. There is a massive difference. Your reputation starts now. You will be with your new band of brothers from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed in all season, weather or terrain. The key to this is make a small group of mates stick together, help each other, have a battle buddy, have someone, you're accountable for him, he's accountable for you. You won't get told to do this, but it's a tip for young players and I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend it. And I'd appreciate it if I had a battle buddy when I was going through. So what does this mean to you to get your skippy badge? Everything. It's everything I've been working for all this time. And yeah. You know you can get it at the shop for $1.78? <laughs> <laughs> you might as well get it. Yeah, probably. It's got to be earned, doesn't it? Yeah. What battalion are you going to? Seven. Bam, seven. All right, for all those guys in uh, Adelaide, here he comes. Okay, get ready. <laughs> Some of the titles that you could take to the battalion with you are that you're a good bloke, a solid team member, someone that doesn't have to have someone watch over them. You know, someone who's capable to do all functions within the section. But there's also others. There is the quitter, the guy who does just enough not to get back squatted, is a liability to the section, but again, just skims through. Will he evolve? We hope so. But then there's the other guy you don't want to be. Sorry, Jill, but we're talking about Jack. Jack is the Jack man. He, he is the guy that has let people down. The selfish guy. The taker, so to speak. The guy that only cares about himself, and that will follow him into the battalion and potentially for the rest of his military career. You don't want to be the Jack man. Sorry, Jill. Unless you're the Jack of all trades, of course. Or unless your name is Jack. Hugh Jackman, Jack in the Box, Albert Jacker. Team, let's move on to point two, and we'll call this one huh, Weapons. Kapuka first. Kapuka, we saw people who have never thrown so much as a potato at a target of all genders, of custard arm, of no muscle. Throwing F1 grenades. People that could do eight push-ups. People that done pre-fit that could only do two. Throwing an F1 grenade with a blast radius, casualty radius of 15 metres, further than what they can throw, 455 grams of metal and HE explosive from a static location. Also firing the F89, the light machine gun. Also firing the EF88, also, maybe firing the pistol and potentially firing the Mag 58, the 7.62 medium machine gun, the workhorse of the infantry in the Western world. With all that out the way, a lot of that is at participation level. Okay? But then we move over to practicality. We go to the School of Infantry. The fact that it says school doesn't mean that we play around. Although we do a little bit, sense of humor is important. But when you go to the School of Infantry, not only will you fire these weapon systems okay, at a higher uh, difficulty level in a movement box, B and C class ranges, but what will occur is you'll be firing it by day, by night, under fatigue, and as a team of members on the move. You'll have overhead gunfire. You'll be moving towards targets and may even still be doing flanking attacks by day and night, which means you have call signs moving in front of other call signs while firing live rounds at targets that have been triangulated for your safety, but also to represent enemy because we can't have real ones out there. But you're also going to be firing the Mag 58 and that'll be a scoring shoot. You're going to be firing again the F-89. You're going to be firing the EF-88. You're going to be firing the Big Daddy, the 84. If you think you're constipated, fire that. No more. You'll be fine. You'll be firing the uh, short-range anti-armor weapon, the 72 millimeter as well. So what else will we be firing? And the GLA, the grenade launcher. 
You'll be firing all these weapons. Get it out of your system. It's exciting the first few times, then they become a tool of the trade. There's some things you need to know about these weapons, but because they're not just fun to shoot. Oh, by the way, you'll also be firing the M18A1, which is the anti-personnel device known as the Claymore. 700 ball bearings, 700 grams of explosives, C4 composite. Make sure the M57's in your pocket. The M4 blast cap assembly, you know, will be the cord that attaches them both. And make So the diversity of weapon systems means there is no equality in the section when it comes to workload, when it comes to uh, load itself. There'll be people that are carrying the MAG-58. There'll be people carrying the Minimai. There'll be people carrying the EF-88. So some will be carrying heavy, some will be carrying light, lighter. You'll be carrying spare barrels. The difference is also you'll be carrying first-line ammunition, which used to be 800 rounds for the gun. 600 rounds might be what you're carrying actual. And at 210 rounds, seven magazines for a stire. It's a lot. It gets heavy. It's a burden, and it takes its toll. When you actually combine this with patrolling, how do I carry it? It's rubbing on me. Oh, no one cares. You need to get to the end. You need to pretend that it's not affecting you at all. You need to be able to use that weapon, functional movement, crossfit. You need to be able to do it all. And at a moment's notice, with live rounds, or blank, or dry. Weapons. So team, let's go into point three, and this is the most relevant point to all of those that are considering getting in the military. And if you saw the first video of this series, part point eight was do the work. For all of those that went to Kapuka that had done their use session, assessment session, and then done their PFA or pre-fit, etc., got through the door of Kapuka, what did fitness mean to you? It was a daily grind. Something you had to go and do. It's not easy. It's still hard. But your level of fitness didn't determine whether you did or did not go to your core. And this includes infantry team. It hasn't affected whether you get to infantry. But this is where it all changes. It's not a five kilometer walk to the range anymore. It's not a um, circuit where no one can actually gauge where you are at. There was no practical physical test on the ground that determined are you capable of even going into the field well that all changes when you get on the bus at the bus when you get on the bus at the end of kapuka leave your buddies of not arms corps or those that are going to engineers going to uh, aviation going to cav and you get on the bus and you go to the school of infantry when you get into the school of infantry everything Everything is about fitness because your core is a physical core. And I don't mean apples. That's not that funny. What I mean, okay, what I mean is do not get PT mixed up with fitness. PT is something we do. It's a conditioning program to get you up to scratch. But in the School of Infantry, let me put this one to you. You get to the School of Infantry late at night off the bus, from Bus, from Kapuka, the home of the Australian soldier. Now you're in the home of the infantry soldier. You get off the bus, you go to Gallipoli, you get put down, put your head down on a bunk, knowing the next morning your first parade is going to be in PT gear, where the very first thing that's going to happen is a BFA. You're going to go out and do a fitness test that is going to determine straight up, it's already beyond the fitness levels of what was required in Kapuka. And this will determine where are you. Are you an up or are you a down when it comes to a session that may be going to start very soon, maybe only a few days away at the School of Infantry. And again, Bimba, Gallipoli, uh, Capiong, Long Tan, etc. There might have already been people that have been waiting for a month to go into that session and you might be one of the 48 that's going to qualify for that, all based on how you do your BFA on day one of getting the School of Infantry. It's a... Slap in the face to let you know. You're not in Kansas now, Dorothy. So if you do well, no worries. Good. You're passed. If you don't, then you're going to go to the ROP and they're going to determine whether it was from injury, whether it was from illness, COVID, or 
whether you are just not fit enough and you need to be cooked a little bit more. And if you don't make it towards that session, you go back to Gallipoli platoon, you stay in Gallipoli platoon, not for eight months like they did in World War I, but every single day you are going to now do conditioning program to get you fitter and fitter and fitter and fitter. And they will work you until you get into the session. So if you don't make session, that's 13 weeks, does not start until you are physical enough to be able to commence the rigors of the course. So let's just say you do make it. And then you get into a session, say a week later. You're already going to be in with a whole bunch of people you don't know, which takes back to the human element, point one. You're going to be put into sections of 12. You'll have a section commander, not a section instructor, which I believe was point two in the previous video. And then from there, what's going to occur is every single thing you do is going to be physical, whether it is doing PT as a conditioning program to prepare you for the rigors of your role in 343, or whether it is something physical as part of the training, which could be a pack march, which is not necessarily classed as PT because it can go on for hours. Okay, it could be obstacle courses, it could be digging, it could be section attacks, it could be fighting withdrawals, it could be actually just in the field itself, patrolling, followed by living in the elements. All of these things take physical fitness, physical conditioning, functional movement, muscular endurance, and physical toughness. If you don't have those, if you don't have a bit of ticker in here, you're going to suffer. And if you suffer and if you fail, your section fails too. Consider this. If you are not up to fitness, up to scratch, so to speak, and you have to be prepared to be able to carry the Minimoi or the or the, uh, the Maximoi or the Mag 58 at any point of time, if you are carrying that and you fall behind, you cannot use your weapon, you cannot fire your weapon, the functionality of your section starts to break down, the combat firepower, and you are now a liability. You can't say, but my weapon weighs more. Big deal, Jack. The hardest thing to explain to people is the diversity of training. The diversity of training as infantry means you have to be a master of all because you have to be able to swim. You have to be confident in the water. Just because the swim test in Kapuka is 30 meters, you still need to be able to do a 40 minute session in the pool's recovery session as an intensity session run by the PDIs backing up after a hard physical session from the previous day. So you need to be confident in the water. You need to be able to be good with packs, to be able to carry that weight and be able to take that mental and physical anguish and agony that goes through your lower legs, through the arch of your feet, through your traps. If you don't have traps, can they still be sore? Through the delayed onset muscle soreness of the uh, activity you did the day before, of having cardio when you catch the fox. Could it be also the sprinting you have to do as part of the rundown crawl, observe, aim, fire, at a moment's notice, with no stretches, when a shot rings out and you yell at contact front. By day or by night, with limited amounts of food. There's no such thing as meals. 72 hours for digging in in the defensive phase. No sleep. Arduous conditions, weather, hot, too hot, cold, too cold. Not enough sleep, no sleep. Not enough food. Not fitting in, sore, calluses, torn, keep digging, son. Fitness is the hardest thing and it is the staying power. It is the super glue of the infantry soldier. And if you don't have the grit, you need to get some quickly. Because if you don't, it's a painful life. And it goes back to point eight in my previous video. Do the goddamn work before you turn up to Kapuka. Stop it. What color is this? If you said black, you're racist. Black Mike's matter. Especially if his name is Mike. Team fitness. You need it. And you're a team element. If one person is struggling, all of you are struggling. Because now you might have to carry his pack. You might have to carry his water. Carry his ammunition. Carry him. You're not allowed to do that. The hardest thing we used to do in the school of infantry when I went through was an eight kilometre in patrol order, stretch a carry. But it was to a time limit. Eight kilometres, and it had to be at the carry. 
down at the trail position, not lifting it up here to the shoulder, which meant your arms blew out. And that was for a section. And it takes a whole section to carry a body, believe me. And then when one is on the stretcher, that's one less. One commanding the section, one less. Two I see, control the rotations. Digging, 72 hours. Shell scrape, stage one, stage two, stage three. Carrying equipment, construction. It never stops wiring. Fireman carry, casualty withdrawal. There's four, four phases to war. One is the advance, so you patrol in there. The next is the attack. You're sprinting, fighting, shooting. Then there's the defense. All of a sudden, we're digging for up to 72 hours so we can hold ground. But uh, night, regardless of season, weather, terrain. What's that followed by the withdrawal? So you're up, pack on, walking again to get the hell out of there, out of Dodge. Because we've got to get back to a secure area before a vehicle platform can pick us up and get us the FUC out of town. Diddy Mao, as I used to say, in Nam. Team, that's fitness. I can't stress it enough. But fitness and toughness are two different things. The School of Infantry, when you walk out into that rain, into the sun, Regardless of the temperature, it's hell. And you have to pretend it doesn't worry at all. But it worries you here. Hmm. Take it easy. Fitness. So team, consider this the summary for the last two videos. And that is the difference between Kapuka all core training in the home of the Australian soldier as opposed to versus infantry training in the home of the Australian infantry soldier. And although it is everyone's secondary role to be an infantry soldier, they pale in comparison of what it takes in qualification, in what it takes in capability to actually have the 343, to wear the coveted skippy badge of the Royal Australian Regiment. To live under the mantle of the words duty first. Infantry is where every single commando came from. Infantry is where the majority of the Special Air Service Regiment recruit from. Infantry are the tip of the spear. We can be as soft and politically as correct as we want to be in Australia, domestically, on paper. Cook the books. But the people that pay the price, when the shit hits the fan, when the glass smashes, when politicians can't get it together, always starts with 343. Good soldiering, and remember the work you do before you go in, doesn't cancel out the fact that fate awaits you as well. But we're in your corner. That's me in the corner. It's me in the spots. You're going to get injuries. 100%. But life wasn't here to be wrapped in dunas. Make yourself proud. Live your life. And one day, you'll be telling stories, maybe through a mic of colour, to someone else when they ask you on an Anzac Day, which is your new birthday, so to speak. Tell us a story. What was it like? I don't know what's ahead of you. Neither do you. And neither, neither does anyone else. But I'm proud of you. And you got 100 points in advance. If you're from any other corps but infantry, please. Remember these soldiers. Their job, the secret source, is physicality. Is physical toughness and restraint. You don't have to tip a hat to them. But at least respect the fact of where they've come and where they're going. The grunt isn't a job for the dumb. It's a job for the motivated, for the patriotic, for the strong, and for those that went a little bit further. Take it easy, 343. Three. Become a brother. That's all I ask. Take it easy. Don't cry for me, Argentina. Never been there. <laughs> What's it called? Hey, guys, girls. It's Kaz from In The Trenches with Kaz. East side. 
coming to you for some of the future veterans of the Royal Australian Regiment. Duty first, letting you know these boys prepare mentally and physically to come to a town near you.